Well, good evening. How's everyone doing tonight? Great. Good to see y'all. Are you happy to be in the house of the Lord on a Wednesday night in the middle of the week? Amen. Amen. Let's go ahead and stand up. We're going to sing a little bit. We're going to sing Send the Light. Let's lift it up. There's a call comes ringing over the restless way. Send the light. Send the light. There are souls to rescue. There are souls to save. Send the light.
All right, hang on just a quick second before we sing this next verse. I'm going to teach you guys, the congregation, something I always tell the choir when we're singing a word that ends in a T. Choir, what is that? What do I say on like anything that would be like light? Enunciate your T because if you're not careful, it sounds like you're singing send the lie. Is Jesus Christ a lie? No, he's not a lie. He is the light. Amen? Amen. So just enunciate it. Remember what you're singing about. Remember who you're singing to. He is the light. Amen? Amen. All right, let's try it. We're going to sing that next verse when we get to the chorus. Enunciate. Okay, here we go. Let us not grow weary in the work of love. Send the light. Send the light. Let us gather to I got you thinking about it at least. Praise God for that. All right, we're going to move on. We're going to sing trust and obey. All right, let's sing it out. When we walk with the Lord in the light of his word, what a glory he sheds on our way. When we do his good will, he abides with us still. people said Amen. right good everybody this evening or good everybody good evening this evening everybody there that's more like it how's everybody doing tonight good to see you all let me ask you I know we have a couple of visitors but anybody you want to introduce your visitors go ahead I uh, just you can tell them And, and we all know why they came up, and it wasn't to see Gerardo, it was to see the new grandbaby. <laughs> Which is oh, down the nursery, eating. So we look forward to, to meeting the new one. But uh, you will get to meet uh, Nolan here and his family here in a minute. They are missionaries to Uganda, but let's say things going on. Uh, August, we got past work week. If you're still like roaming around during the day and thinking, man... Could I go up to the church and do something? There's still some painting. Uh, at some point, uh, Jerry, who's in charge of the lights, is going to put the lights up. And uh, that way, if they fall over, it's not Darren's fault. <laughs> but uh, August, I mean, can you believe the summer's about over? I know, I don't like to hear it either. But uh, things are kind of winding down, all of our summer activities and school will be starting up at the end of the year. Did you hear that? School will be starting up back there. Yes. <laughs> Look, the, the high school department, they're like, don't even talk about it. <laughs> but uh, anyway, so that's the things going on that I can think of, that I know of. But uh, tonight we are going to take up an offering, and tonight's offering we are going to be, uh, we're going to take it up for 
for Noel and his family for a love offering. So, so dig deep. They are. They've been out on the. Uh, they've been out on debutation. You're looking to go. I don't want to steal any thunder. He's going to Uganda, and they're hoping to be out January, <laughs> February. So, let's see if we can get them some gas money and some food money while they're driving on around. So, but uh, I believe that's really all things going on. So why don't we go ahead and take up an offering? So, gentlemen, if you'll come forward, and let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I just, Lord, we thank you for this night, just a night where we've set aside, Lord, to, to, to pray for your missionaries, Lord, to lift them up to you and to uh, just uh, to focus on missions tonight. Lord, we thank you for Noel and his family coming by tonight. Thank you for bringing them to us. And tonight, Lord, we just, we want you to be glorified because without Jesus Christ, there is no missions. So, Father, I pray we'd be at the offering, be with the service, the singing. Lord, I just pray that everything said and done tonight would bring honor and glory to the name of Jesus. And in Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Amen.
an amazing Savior we have in Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Do we have a message to tell people? Or do we have a message to tell to people? Yeah. Amen. Let's go ahead and stand back up. The last song we're going to sing tonight is Jesus Paid It All. Let's lift it up. I hear the Savior say, Thy strength indeed is small. Child of weakness, watch and pray. Find in me thine all in all. Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain, he washed it white as snow. good singing tonight. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Lord, love you so much. Thank you for who you are and all that you do. Lord, we thank you for the privilege that you've given us to be here tonight, Lord. Lord, just thank you for allowing us to be a part of a missions-minded church, Lord, that has not just a local focus, Lord, but a global focus as well, Lord. Uh, the world needs Jesus Christ. That's just the heart of the matter, Lord. Just ask that you would strengthen us to be bold to share the gospel where we're at. Lord, I thank you for this time that we've got tonight to hear reports from missionaries. Thank you for the privilege of having a missionary with us tonight. Lord, I just pray that, uh, Lord, you'd be glorified in all things, and just pray that, uh, Lord, if there is someone here tonight that does not know Jesus Christ as their Savior, Lord, that you would just work on their hearts, touch their hearts tonight, and Lord, I just pray that you would give them the courage to just seek out how they may know they have the hope of eternal life through the shed blood of Jesus Christ. It's in Jesus' precious and holy name we pray. Amen. Yeah, once you wait, you can say it afterwards. I'd like to give Nolan a, an opportunity to just address you all. Nolan, just let us know what you're up to, your plans, where you're headed, and what you plan on doing once you get there. Yes, and introduce your family as well. Oh, yes, we need a microphone. All right. Uh, good evening. Um, it is always such a blessing to be in the Lord's house. Um, but it's even greater when you're um, in a church that you can definitely tell that you guys love the Lord. And so thank you for that. Um, thank you for your hospitality and your kindness um, to our family. It's just we've been here uh, since the second we walked in. Um, so we appreciate that. Um, as Pastor was mentioning, my name is Nolan. Uh, right back here is my wife, Janae, if you'll wave your hand for everybody. Um, and then we have two children. We have a three -year our three-year-old son, Kaysen, and our nine-month-old daughter, Miss Maylie Ann. Um, and together, we're the Letourneau family missionaries to Uganda. Um, as uh, they were saying, we are currently on deputation. We've been at it for about a year and a half, and uh, we're hoping to hit the field um, January or February of this coming year. Um, but just a little bit about Uganda. Um, the Lord called both my wife and I to missions before we even met. Uh, the Lord called my wife when she was 16 and called me to missions when I was a freshman at Bible College there down in Springfield. Um, but then the Lord called us ultimately to go to Uganda. And the biggest reason for that is he made it very evident the need um, for more missionaries in that country. Um, Uganda is home to 45 million people, and out of that 45, over 90% of that population belongs to a false religion, false doctrine, um, or doesn't even associate with any sort of religion at all. A uh, majority of the country is... Um, holds to the religions of Anglican, Roman Catholicism, and Islam. Um, but we also learned that we went on, when we went on a survey trip that despite these other false religions, there's another underlying issue that's happening in Uganda, and that is witchcraft. Um, witchcraft is still very evident, is very um, practiced, um, ac um, very actively practiced there in Uganda. And so there are many Ugandan men and women who are enslaved to the traditions of witchcraft. Um, so doing that, we saw the great need. 
the great need for more missionaries. Um, our plan in Uganda really is very simple. Um, it's our desire to go and win them for the Lord uh, by actively sharing our faith. It's our desire to see men, women, boys, and girls uh, put their faith in Jesus Christ as their personal Savior and Lord. Um, we also have a desire to disciple and to train more leaders. As a missionary, um, our job really is to work ourselves out of a job. Um, it's our desire to win these people for the Lord, but then also train them so that then they can win others as well, um, so that we can train up men to be pastors. My wife can train up women to be leaders and workers in the church. Um, and we also have a great desire to be church planting missionaries. Um, there's a desperate need for more churches. Um, and by churches, I mean churches that preach and teach the truth of God's word. Um, the country is filled with churches who don't do that. Um, and so there's a dire need for that. And we're so thankful that the Lord has called our family to do that. So if you'll just please pray for our family as we're in this first step of the process of just getting there. Um, once we get there, we will have to do a few years of language school. Um, but then we are planning on jumping right into ministry and um, actively seeking out where the Lord's going to have us plant our very first church. So thank you so much. Well, thank you, thank you. So, Miss Melissa, it's all yours now. Savior hung between two thieves. Hear the soldiers mock his name. Hear his followers as they cry in disbelief. This could not be the reason Jesus came. See him realize his life is through. Feel the love burn from his eyes. Behold the temple veil as it is torn in two. And hear the one on Calvary as he cries. Paid in full, I've done the work I came to do. Paid in full, I've paid love's final price for you. When all hell tries to tell you that you'll never win, just remember that the debt for your sin is paid in full. See his children torn between two ways. Some still choose to mock his name. Hear his followers now as they can boldly say we are the reason that he came see the ones who trust themselves alone to do what only christ can do through Jesus' blood alone, we may approach the Father's throne and hear the words that he still cries to you. Paid in full, I've done the work I came to do. Paid in full, I've paid love's final price for you. And when all hell tries to tell you that you'll never win, 
Just remember that the debt for your sin is paid in full. I've done the work I came to do, paid in full. I've paid love's final price for you. And when all hell tries to tell you that you'll never win, just remember that the debt for your sin is paid in full. Just remember that the debt for your sin is paid in full. It's paid in full. Amen, amen. If you would be turning to Galatians chapter 6. Galatians chapter 6. We are going to start reading from verse 1 and read the first 10 verses. Yet forgive me that we have nothing on the TVs tonight. I, uh, I, I sent my, I got ready to type, I typed up my email and, and I attached my sermon to send to Carrie and I don't know what happened after that. Until she said, so what, no notes? <laughs> so, Galatians 6, starting verse 1, it says, Brethren, if any man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such as one in the spirit of meekness. Consider thyself, lest thou also be tempted. Bear ye one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. For if any man think himself to be something when he is nothing, he deceiveth himself. But let every man prove his own work, and then shall he have rejoicing in himself alone and not in another. For every man shall bear his own, uh, his own burden. Let him that is taught in the word communicate unto him that teaches in all good things. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For uh, whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to the flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the spirit shall reap of the spirit, uh, <clears throat> shall of the spirit reap life everlasting. Let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap, if we faint not. As we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who are of the household of faith. And, and here Paul's addressing the church at Galatia. And, and tonight I, I want to focus on verse 9 there when he says, Let us not be weary in well-doing. You know... Especially, you know, we are missionaries that are a lot of times are out there and especially when you're starting new churches and it's you that's doing everything. It's you, your family and in church ministry is it's hard. It's it's you get tired. And and there's times that you just don't know how you're gonna go on, especially I mean you're dealing like we had work week, we were dealing with the property. But in between all that you're dealing with people. And lives and, and you're having to help build up people so they can bear their own burdens you're having to do all these things and 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 making sure we're doing it the way God wants it done and it's tough it's tiresome and if we're going to get done what we're supposed to do it's gonna take strength but the thing is is God never told us we had to have our own strength to do it. God has always said, rely on me. And I will carry you through. In Isaiah chapter 40, verse 28 through 31, there's a, uh, a well-known verse. You'll see it on plaques all the time. But it says here, Hast thou not known, hast thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not? Neither is weary. There is no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faint, and to them that have no might he increases strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young man shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their spirit, their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Those that who 
that, we, that rely on the everlasting God, the creator of everything, the creator of everything. He is, is the one that gives us the strength. He said, listen, even the young man is going to get tired. So even me and Ron are going to get tired from time to time. <laughs> it's going to happen. But he says, listen, you, you wait on me. You rely on me. I'll give you strength. When you think you can't do it, I'll give you the strength to do it. Because God knows the job that he set us for is too important to quit. It's too important to get weary and lay down and sleep. One day we're going to get to rest. One day we will. But until that day comes, we got work to do. Our missionaries got work to do. I hope you do pray for them every day. I hope you pray for your missionaries. I hope you lift them up to the Lord because they need strength. Like I said, it, it's, it's a tough world. Not only are they out there having to, to build a, a church building, but they got to build souls. And sometimes you're taking people from nothing to try to get them to the point so they can minister with you. I, I appreciate that you, your, one of your plans is discipleship, to disciple the people because that's so, so necessary. Because if you don't, then you know who does all the work? The missionary does. He's the one that's turning on the lights and then setting everything up and cleaning and then shutting it down. And before long, if you're the one doing everything, you're getting weary. It's time. It just, it'll wear on you to the point that, again, you're not able to get done what God wants us to get done. And that's to take Jesus Christ to this world, to give them the gospel, to then teach them how to Live a life in Christ. It's not just getting them saved, but then taking them to Christ and then showing them how to live a life in Christ so they too can be blessed, so they can go out and do the work as well. Because the more people we have doing the work, the more people that's involved, the greater the, the outcome. Because he said, what he say back there in Galatians? Listen, if we, if we faint not, we will reap. We don't always see it right now while we're going Sometimes our focus is, you know, you're so intense, you don't see the, the outcome. You know, you'll go out door knocking, you won't always see whether or not that seed is truly planted. But you know what? One day we will get to see. But that's not what God wants us to focus on. What God wants us to focus on is Him. Because He is the one who brings strength. He is the one who will give us the, the wings to build a fly like eagles. He's the one that carries us through it all. He's the one that's going to take you to Uganda. And when you get down there, get you through language school. He's the one that gets this church through every week. And because of him, we see lives saved. We see, you know what, because of him, I am where I am right now. Because of the work of this church. So, let's just look at a few things that we got to remember. If, we, if, if we're going to get done what we got to do, we, we have to rely on the Lord. So, back there in Isaiah 40, as we'd read that, just keep your finger there, because we're going to bounce back and forth, but we'll be looking at other verses. But there in verse 28 of Isaiah 40, it says, Hast thou not known, hast thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary? There is no searching of his understanding. He said, listen, stay focused on the Lord. Because, I mean, he's God. I mean, we worked on some things out here. I mean, Jerry worked on the lights out there. Uh, I, we had a group out there working on the overhang, and they created some nice things. God created the earth. And I can tell you, these guys out here working and these ladies out here working, they got tired. God doesn't get tired. He doesn't. So if we're going to make it, if we're going to get done what God wants to do, we've got to stay focused on the Lord. Because if we're not focused on the Lord, you know what's going to happen? We start looking at ourselves, And we start looking at us and thinking, you know what? I'm tired. I'm weary. I mean, I was, I praise the Lord that work week was not the hottest week of the year. The week prior, the week after. 
But I got tired out there. Digging holes, pouring concrete, doing all those things that needed done. But we're, we have human bodies. We get tired. God doesn't. And if we're not careful, that's what our focus is, is the aches and pains. Man, I've been, you know, up and down a ladder. I've been in and out of holes. I, I've told you, I, I, <clears throat> I believe the shovel was invented after the fall of man. Because they had to, had to till the ground, had to work in the ground. So it's, it's all it's shovel because of Satan. And <laughs> but uh, I can't find that in the Bible. I mean, you do have to till the ground afterwards, so don't. <clears throat> but anyway, but we have to stay focused on God because why? He's eternal. You understand, you know, you and I, we're, we're in control by time. So as the day would progress during work week, you'd get at nine, you know, getting close to nine, I'm ready to lay down and go to bed. God's not controlled by that. God's eternal. God created time. God's not controlled by time. You and I are controlled by time. So you know what? If I'm going to rely on somebody for their strength, it's the one that's not controlled by the things of this world. And that's God. Because he does the controlling. In Deuteronomy 33, 27, I tell you what, tonight, just uh, jot these things down. Because i got a lot of verses I want to look at tonight. But in Deuteronomy 30, uh, 33, 27, it says, The eternal God is thy refuge, and underneath are the everlasting arms. And he shall thrust out the enemy before thee, and shall say, Destroy them. That the God's our refuge. He is his everlasting arms. God doesn't get weary. His arms are always strengthened. And he can always carry us. We just need to keep our focus on him. And in the ministry, like I said, in the ministry, it gets tough. Not only are you having to do all of these other things, but we're, you're, you're, you've got lives in your hands. We have to get the gospel out. Then, and then, like I said, God has not tasked us to do that, but he wants us to build people. I mean, that's our, our motto here, building people to Christian service. It's not just let's get them saved, but let's get them saved and let's get them doing what God wants them to do. It, it's not just saved, but teaching them how to be a Christian. It takes work. And, and I got to be honest with you, sometimes the, the, the carnal side of the work out here is easier than the people side. And I'm not, I'm, I'm not bad-mouthing people, but I mean... I'm sure there's times that pastor, after working with me, wanted to go lay down and take a nap. A couple of times, I think he wanted to go ahead and, and lay down with the bears for the winter and just hibernate after me. It takes work. It takes strength. But again, if we don't keep our focus on God, the one, the eternal God, the one that fainteth not, neither is weary, then we see ourselves who gets weary. We see ourselves who gets tired, who gets sore, who going through all these things thinking, I, I don't think I can do this anymore. The job's too important for anybody, of us, any of us to quit. And you know what? There's a lot more world out there that needs missionaries. There's a whole lot of world out there. There's a whole lot of town. Every time I turn around, they're putting up new luxury apartments in Lee Summit and I mean, more people are coming. They need to know Jesus. The work is great. But we also got to remember, God's all power. God, he's God. In Psalms 33, 6, it says, By the word of the Lord were the heavens made, and all the host of them by the breath of his mouth. You show me anything, anybody, anywhere that's got greater power than that can speak the world into existence, can say, let there be, and there is. It can't happen. He's God. If God wants something done, if we will just yield ourselves to him, he can and will get it done. That's God. There's nothing he can't do. He is all power. By the words of the Lord were the heavens made. Everything we know exists because of Him. We need to rely on Him for everything. You understand, Christians, there, there's nothing out here we don't rely on God for. Nothing. 
your food, your clothing, how to raise your children, how to do anything. And then when you get into ministry, everything is him. Lord, give me the strength, give me the wisdom, give me the knowledge, give me everything I need so we can accomplish your task. We want to put more missionaries on the field? We got to rely on the Lord because we can't do it on our own. We want to be able to, to bring in more offerings so we can get more out there? We got to rely on God. Because again, He is the one. He's all power. In Hebrews 1 3, it says, Who being the brightness of His glory, the expressed image of His person, and upholding all things by the word of His power. When he by himself purged our sins and sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. Who, who himself by his own power purged us from sins. You ever tried to, to get something out of your life that shouldn't be there? It's work. It is work. Because you get these things in our life that controls us. And, and they want to control us, and they want to direct our, our ways and everything we do. And you're sitting there, you're trying to get rid of it. And then you figure out, you know what, if I just give it to God. And you give it to God, and he takes it away. He purchased his sins. He, he's the only one who could come down to this world and not be controlled by this world. He's the only one. Because you and I, as much as we don't like it, we're controlled by this world. We're controlled by time. We're controlled by circumstances. All these things around us want to control us and take our time away from us. The last thing this world wants us doing is out doing the work of the Lord. So it throws everything at us. Instead of understanding that if I'm going to make it through, I just rely on God. Does it mean that the world's still not going to be out there? Sure it is. It's still going to try to control me. It's still going to try to, to, to get me where I'm tired and get me to stop. But if I rely on God, He gives me the strength to do it all. And then at the end of the day, you look back when you've been doing God's work and relying on God and thinking the things we accomplished. You know, I think about the walkers when they went down to Argentina. And I just remember when they came back here during our, our missions conference talking to Cody, and he's just talking about, you know, I never, never really realized how tough it was, how much work it was to start a church. Because you've got to go out there. Not only are you trying to go out there and invite people in and do some evangelizing, but you've got to get the church ready as well. You've got to get songs. You got to do all those things so when they come in, you have something for them to do. And in between time, you've got to be studying. And then you get new Christians. And sometimes, I mean, and that's basically what he was starting with was new Christians. He was getting them saved and bringing them in. And that's how you build a church. And he was getting them brought in. And now you have to, not only am I going to have to deal with, you know, I got to have a sermon, we got to have some songs for him, I got to do all these things, and I got to get the church ready. But I have to teach them now how to be a Christian in the meantime. Because you know what? When there's problems, who are they going to call? They're going to call their pastor, the missionary. And now all of a sudden, I'm having to deal with my own worries, but I've got I, I to handle their problems too. So you rely on God. And you watch him go to work. He gives you the strength. He gives you the wisdom. So when they do come up to you and say, I've got this problem in my life, how do I fix it? Because so often, as, you know, as a pastor or as a missionary, your first thought is, Man, I don't have a clue. I've never had that problem in my own life. And all of a sudden, God starts throwing verses at you. Give him this one. Tell him this. Give him this verse. You've got to rely on God. Because like I said, after a while, you get weary. I mean, I, I'm talking with various missionaries, you know, talking with Cody out there. It's, it's tough work. It's not only the physical side, but the mental side. And sometimes, you know what? Like I said, there's times when going out here and mowing the grass is like a vacation. Because <laughs> I'm not having to think anymore. I can just relax, ride the mower around, watch the grass fly, watch the dandelions go away. <laughs> the physical side, a lot of times, is the easy part. 
it's the mental side of mission of ministries. It's all those other things you got to deal with. You got to rely on God. In Jeremiah thirty two twenty seven, he says, Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? What's God saying? Listen, do you think there's anything out there I can't do? Because again, so often we look at what we can and what we can't do based upon our own self. We put limitations on God. Well, God, I know you want me to do this, but I, I can't do that. I mean, we, we turn Moses on him. Well, I'm a terrible speaker, Lord. I mean, I, 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 I'm going to stutter and stammer and carry on. I can't do this. Instead of saying, all right, Lord, if you want to do this with me, let's, let's go do this. You want to send me to a foreign country? I mean, you know, you know where my mission field is. I... <clears throat> You know, God sent, called me to Belize. And you know why he's called me to Belize, right? And it's not because it's part of the Caribbean and it's right along the ocean. That has nothing to do with it. They speak English. <laughs> I mean, I've, I've had my son try to teach me Spanish. I've had the walkers try to teach me Spanish. I've had Victoria try to teach me Spanish. That scared me. I didn't know what he was actually saying to me and want me to tell various people, go tell the waitress this. And I'm thinking, I'm going to get slapped. <laughs> it doesn't roll off my tongue. This tongue has a hard time with English, let alone another language. But again, I have no doubt that if God sent me anywhere, he'd give me the ability. God sent Uganda. He's going to give you the ability. Because why? Is there anything too hard for him? It's like saying, Lord, you just don't know me. You can't teach me a new language. And God's thinking, I can put that language on your tongue right now and you can speak fluently. Because I'm God. But we, we stop him and say, you can't, you can't do it because of me. And if we get saying that too much, you know what? God is not going to be able to use us. He's not going to be able to accomplish what he wants. Why? Not because of him, but because of you and I. Instead of just saying, Lord, if that's what you want me to do, then let's do it. Lord, if you want to send me here, let's go. I'm excited. Because I can't wait to see you teach me a new language. I can't wait to see you teach me a new culture. I can't wait to see you save a city in the middle of Belize somewhere. I can't, you know what? Because there's nothing too hard for him. What do he say? I, behold, I am the Lord. Here he is in Jeremiah. And Jeremiah, they're going through, they're trying to get Israel to turn back to God. They turned away from God. God is ready to just destroy the nation. He's ready to divorce the nation of Israel. He's written them a, a bill of divorcement. And he keeps telling them, now you tell the people, if they will turn back to me, that I will repent of my evil. Just listen, get him to come back to me. I can, we, I can do this because I'm God. You just have to trust me. But again, too often we trust everything else around us but God. Or should I say we have a whole lot of lack of trust because of everything around us. We look at ourselves again and think, Lord, you, you don't understand who I am. And he's thinking, Darren, I know you better than you do. I know your heart. I know your mind. I know everything. I'm the one that created you. I'm the one that gave you any ability that you have. And if you need more ability, I will give it to you. You are not too big for me to use. We just have to rely on God. Get our focus off of self. Self keeps God from getting th things done. Self keeps God from being able to get this world evangelized. So we have to take our minds off ourselves and remember, God's all power. We also need to remember that there's nothing that takes God by surprise. 
You know, there's some things that come along in ministry and you think, man, I didn't see that coming. But there's nothing like that with God. I mean, when we took the siding off the, the soffit over here, you know, and it was all rotted in there, I didn't see that coming. Actually, I did. But, <laughs> but there's things that happen. You think, man, I didn't see that coming. Nothing takes God by surprise. God sees all. He knows all. Again, he's not controlled by time. You know, I can't sit up here and try to explain how that works because I'm, I'm controlled by that. But to understand, can God see tomorrow? God can see everything because he's not controlled by this time. So nothing's going to come around the corner that he doesn't know. So who do we rely on? We rely on God because he sees it all. In Psalms 103, in verse 13 and 14, Psalms 103, 13 and 14, it says, Like as a father pitieth his children, so the Lord pitieth them that fear him, for he knoweth our frame. He remembereth that we are dust. There's nothing me and you can do that's going to surprise the Lord. Listen, it's not like he says, All right, Darren, I'm going to need you to go to this country, and they speak this language. And then I say, But Lord, I don't know how to speak that language. And he's going to say, Oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> He knows it. And if he asks you to do something, he knows what you can and can't do. And you know what? He's not controlled by that. He's just saying, trust me. Trust me. I'll take care of it. Like I said, if he needed me to speak another language, he could put it on my tongue right now. Because he's God. He created language. But how many times do we... Again, do we look at our own abilities and think, man, the Lord does not know who he's talking to? I mean, how many times has pastor came up and said, hey, I need you to do this about this ministry? And you think, man, does he know who I am? I mean, there's been a couple of times I thought he was mad at me. <laughs> but uh, you, you want me to go where? Do you hate me? No, but again, God knows that. God knows what we can and can't do. And he's not controlled by that. Because why? Again, we, God's not taken by surprise. Just follow God. If he says, go here, go there. Because God will make, God will get you there. He will take you there. And he will make sure you have everything you need to get the job done that he sent you to do. I mean, it's like anything in your job. You, your job says, go do this, and they give you the, the tools you need. The Lord's no different. He will give us the tools we need. You know, we got a little one over here, and at the end, of, we'll, we'll introduce this little one over here. I remember taking our daughter home and thinking, Lord, do you have any idea what you are doing here? You just sent me home with a life. I can't take care of my own life. You want me to take care of this life? God gives you the ability. And you know what? If God needs something done, he can do it. But how does he do it? He does it through you and I, people. And he will give us everything we need. So back there in Isaiah, I told you, keep your, uh, your finger in Isaiah chapter 40, verse 29. Again, we've got to draw strength from God. It says there in Isaiah 40, 29, He giveth power to the faint, and to them that have no might, He increases in strength. He says, listen, He gives power to the faint, and them that have no might. He said, it's not a little might or somewhat might, but have no might. He said, He will give the strength. You know what we got to take? Nothing. Well, we gotta, what we bring to the, to the game, we bring nothing. He's got it all. I don't have to get a little bit. It's not like, all right, Lord, let me get a little more understanding now. Let me get a little more knowledge now. I need a little more money. I need a little more of this, a little more of that. Now, you know, let me work on this. He says, just come to me because you know what? If you've got nothing, no might, I'll increase your strength. Because you know what, what happens when we go to him with nothing? We have to rely on him for everything. And that's what he wants. Because if we don't rely on him for everything, you know who we're relying on? Self. 
if I'm going to try to do it and I'm not relying on God, then it has to be me. Because if it ain't him, then who is it? Self. That's when we get weary. That's when we fall. That's when we think. Because all of a sudden we look at the task ahead and we think, that's too big. I can't do that. I can't build a church from nothing. I can't bring a whole community to Christ. I can't do that. I'm only one person. <clears throat> I can't sing. I can't play any instruments. I can't do those things, Lord. And we quit. Instead of saying, all right, Lord, I got nothing. If you want me to do this, I'm relying on you for everything. And you know what God says? Now we can get some work done. Now we can do what needs to be done. Because you know what? You just got out of my way. Now, Darren, let's go to work. Church, let's go to work. I mean, you think about the task at hand, and it's, like I said, it's, it, it's a daunting task. Getting the gospel out to every single language nation in this world. What a task. And it does. It seems big. And you know what? We're not a large church. We're not small, but we're not large. But we're not in alone. We got God. And you know what? There are a lot of other churches out there. Never think we're alone. There's a lot of churches out there. But we got to make sure we're doing our part. Make sure we're not sleeping. Make sure we're not laying down. Make sure we don't quit. Listen, we, again, the job's too important. It's not like, you know, work week, if we decided, you know, when we go home at night, I'm done, I'm tired, I'm going to go home and sleep. There's always tomorrow. You know what? There may not be tomorrow for some people. There's no guarantee. We need to get the job done now. Now, we've got to rely on his strength. He giveth power to the faint, to them that have no mighty increase in strength. In Psalms 18.2, Psalms 18.2, go ahead and turn back there because we're going to jump through some psalms real quick. Psalms 18.2, he says, The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my strength. In whom I will trust, my buckler and the horn of my salvation, my high tower. He said, listen, all those things, he's my rock, my fortress. He protects me from everything. He delivers me from everything. He's my strength. David said, you know what? If I'm going to make it through this, it's only by God. God's the one that gets me through this. God is the one that I need to rely on. Jump forward to Psalms 29.11. And you know what? I could have given you verse after verse after verse. I just picked a few. Psalms 29, 11 says, The Lord will give strength unto his people. The Lord will bless his people with peace. In Psalms 31, 4, it says, Pull me out of the net that they have laid privily for me, for thou art my strength. You're caught up in something. You know who can pull you out? God can. He's our strength. Satan's out here. He's working. Trust me, Satan's working. He doesn't sleep. He wants to stop the work of the Lord. And he's going to try to stop you. And he's going to cast out that net any way he's doing. And when you get caught up, you rely on God. God can pull you out. Psalms 46.1, it says, God is our refuge and strength. A very present help in trouble. And then Psalms 31.24. Be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart, all ye that hope in the Lord. You know what's the first thing to go in ministry? Oops, excuse me. Your heart. Because you know what? You're out there, you're doing all this work, and, and you're trying to get things done, you're working in lives, and you see people, all of a sudden, they, you put all this work into them, and they fall by the wayside. Your heart's the first to go. And it's very easy for your heart to become hardened and think, why even try? Why even try? Because God wants them. And believe me, God, Jesus Christ came and fought the ultimate fight. 
over sin and hell. He doesn't want anybody to go to hell. We got to keep our heart. He will strengthen our heart. Because again, if our heart fails, and I'm not talking about stop beating, I'm talking about stop caring, then Satan's won. Well, you know what? You know, I don't know anybody in that country. Why should I pray for them? You know, I, I got our, we got our own problems. Why worry about the whole world? Shouldn't they be taking care of their own people? How easy would it be to become like that? You know what? Let's just keep our missions money right here. The money that we spend down on missions, think what we could do right here. We could have a new parking lot. Ron, we could probably have a new parking lot, couldn't we? With nice lines. And no grass in the middle of it. Although I'm thinking about just letting it grow and just turning it back into a field. There's going to be asphalt underneath that field, so you still don't want to fall down. But it'll be like AstroTurf. <clears throat> <laughs> I'm only kidding, Pastor. I'll, I'll get it killed. But uh, <clears throat> no. But again, how easy would it be to become inwardly focused because you know what? Your heart just doesn't care anymore. Or even when you're sitting there and you're working with people and you're working with people and it just seems like you're getting nowhere. And you just think, why? I've told you before, I asked Pastor one time, you know, when do you, when do you stop with somebody? How, I mean, how far do you go? And he told me something that I did not want to hear. I'll be honest with you. This is Darren's heart. He said, when they quit coming back, as long as they keep coming back, you keep working. Oh, okay. Yes, 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 Pastor. Yes, Lord, I'll keep working. But so often, again, what's the first thing to go? Is, Lord, guard my heart. You know, every day, that's my prayer. Lord, give me, a, give me a new heart today. Give me a fresh heart. Because you know what? I'm, we're going to have to go out there. First of all, it's got to deal with me, but everything else out there in the world. Where's our strength from? God. Again, keep our focus on God. Back there in Isaiah chapter 40. Again, take your... <clears throat> verse 30 and 31. It says, for even the youth shall, uh, shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with eagles, uh, mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Who? Those that wait upon the Lord. Those that are out there doing the Lord's work. Those that are out there relying on the Lord. Those are the ones that God gives strength to. You want the Lord's strength? He's not going to give you the strength to go out there and try to conquer the world and gain all the things of the world. He gives us the strength we need when we're out there waiting on the Lord, doing His work, relying on the Lord for everything. He's the one. Then He gives us the ability to get done. We can run and not be weary. I mean, that right there is big. I mean, I ran to the refrigerator last night. I had to lay down and nap halfway between the front room and the, and the kitchen. <laughs> no, but he says, listen, you can run and not be weary. Walk and not faint. Why? Because he's God. He can do it all. And he can give us the ability to do what we got to do. I said, I can't imagine going out and, and starting a new work. I had the, the, the luxury of coming to here when the work was already established. I didn't have to start a new work. I didn't have to be the one that did it all. And like I said, lot, most of our missionaries, we, we have a few that are just now getting out there that we took on last year. And you know what? I hope you pray for Noel and his family. Because when he gets out there, it's a fresh work. It's work. You think, man, that would be fun. Yeah, but it's work. Ask anybody that's been out on a mission field. Because, again, you're the one having to do everything. You're the one starting it. Excuse me. The Lord's doing it all, but he's doing it through you. And if you're relying on self, 
and not God, then you know what? You're not going to have the wings. You're not going to run and not be weary. You're going to take off running. You're going to have to stop and lay down. And there's going to come a point when you're, when you're just going to quit. You've got to rely on God. It sounds so easy, doesn't it? And we know that. We all do. We've all read these verses. And we've seen where God says, you know what, like I said, the, you know, there Isaiah 40, 31, how many plaques have you seen that on? Or how many songs have it been sang? And you think, I know that. But yet we get out there and we rely on ourselves. We get out there and think, Lord, I can't do that. I don't have the ability. I don't have the strength. I can't do that. And God says, I can. I can do anything. Is there anything too hard for me? No, Lord, there's not. But Lord, I'm not you. And he says, do you think you, you, think you just surprised me? I know you're not me. But I can do it. So you rely on me. I'm not relying on you, Darren. You're relying on me. We think, you know what, Lord, you can't do it without me. He's God. I can't do it without him. And there's nothing that he can't get done if I allow him to do it. Turn to Psalms 46.10. Sometimes we just need to let God be God. I have this... If you go down to my classroom downstairs, you'll see this on the wall. And I have this next door in my office, Psalms 4610. It's my, my favorite verse. This was a verse at one time we were going through it as a family, just me and Catherine. So, you know, just this and that. And, and I remember one time I just sat down in the middle of my front room floor. Everybody else was gone. I was working night, so I was the only one home. Catherine was up here teaching in the school. And I just sat down. I'm like, Lord, I, I can't do this. This was one of those times where you know where yourself just gets so loud. I can't hear anything but me. I got this, Lord. I can't do this, Lord. We need this, this, and all these things going on. And all of a sudden, I, I opened up my Bible and I found this verse. You ever done that? Just open up your Bible and I found this verse. Psalms 46.10. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. Darren, be still. Hush. I mean, it was one of those times. It was, Darren, shut your mouth and just listen to me. I got this. I got this because I'm God. And when I said, when I opened up and I saw that, I just, I cried. Because I heard God speaking to me. I'm God. And at that point, I knew he's got it. I just need to rely on him. How many times, I mean, you're just so many times, you're going to get out there and you're doing the work. You're out there, you're running your bus route. You're wondering, how am I going to get all this done? You're doing a Sunday school class. you be a Wednesday night, whatever the case may be. And it's like, Lord. And he says, just be still. Hush. I'm God. We need to just let God be God. Let him do the work. You and I just be the vessel. Be the tool. And allow him to do the work. Because if we don't, then we're going to let missions fall. And church, if we're not missions, then we're not who God wants us to be. Back there in Galatians 6.10, What he's telling me, he said, listen, as we, as we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially unto them of the household of faith. Listen, if we're not praying for our missionaries, if we're not supporting our missionaries, we're not doing what God wants us to do. We can't be weary in well-doing. We can't forget about those that are out there doing the work. 
Yes, you know what? We're doing it right here too. But they need our prayers out there. Because sometimes it's just them and a handful of people. You know what? And talking with David when he came back and, 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 and uh, <clears throat> Cody and them, you know what? They're getting people trained up. But it's still them doing most of the work. And we have missionaries that we've just taken on that are out there doing the work and they're getting started. But they need somebody behind them. They need to know they have our support. What does Pastor tell our, our missionaries? What he, the story he tells about Kevin Wynn down in Mexico City. When he said, listen, Kevin, if anything ever happens to you, just know that we will take care of your family. We will make sure you're, if they want to come home back to the States, we will get them back to the States. If they want to stay there, we will make sure they're taken care of. When Manuel died, we didn't give up on Martha. We made sure she's taken care of. That's our promise. And if that's not our promise, you know what, church? We need to look at ourselves. But that's our promise to them. Because you know what? That's God's promise to you and I. I will take care of you. I will provide for you. I will do all these things. I'll give you the strength. What did he say? Tell the church here, listen. As you have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially them of the household of faith. So we need to make sure we're doing what God wants us to do. Not only does God want us to get the gospel out, but he wants us to take care of each other. He wants us to build each other up so that we can all do the work. He wants us, but he wants us to rely on him because he knows he can do the work. He knows he can get it done. We just got to rely on him. One last verse. <coughs> Excuse me, Hebrews 6.10. Because we got to remember, God, God doesn't forget we're out here. Hebrews 6.10 6, Hebrews 6, says, God is not unrighteous to forget your work, your labor of love, which ye have showed toward his name, and that ye have ministered to the saints and do minister. Listen, God's not going to forget what we've done out here. He's not going to forget that Lee Summit Baptist Temple is out here doing the work. He's not going to forget that our missionaries are out there doing the work. Labor of love. Listen, you know what? If it's not a work, if it's not a labor of love, then we're going to quit eventually. You know what God wants us to love? His work. Love Him. Put God first in everything we do. And make that our labor of love. Because you know what? Whatever you love, that's what you do. I mean, let's face it. If you've got something you really love... You know, knitting, whatever the case may be, mini jet boats, and uh, my new labor of love. I don't have one, but, you know, one day. <clears throat> but whatever you love, that's what you put forth all your effort into. You know what God wants us to put all of our effort into? His work. Does that mean that, you know what, I can't have all these other things? You know what, God, like I told you many times, I've I got more things than I ever had. I've done more things. I've had, the, I've had the greatest time in ministry. I have. Why? Because it's been a labor of love. Because when you see lives, you know what? If you see a life destroyed, you see somebody saved and it doesn't bother you, check your heart. If you know there's a country out there that's dark and it doesn't bother you, check your heart. Put God first in all things. Take our focus off the world. There's so much craziness going on out here. Put it on God. Let God show us what to do. Let God do the work. Let's just yield ourselves to him. Yield your members as instruments of righteousness. And let God go to work. And remember, you think, I can't do that? Lord, you can't use me? Is there anything too tough for me? Is there anything I can't do? Absolutely not. All right. Well, 
that's our lesson for tonight. You know what? It's time to introduce this little one over here. I've been looking at him, or excuse me, him. I've been looking at him over there thinking, what a cute little man. <laughs> Rod, are you going to introduce him? Uh, this is uh, our son, Micah Noe Juarez. Amen. <laughs> Pray for those two. <laughs> they have a little ministry there. <laughs> All right. Now's the time. We, for most of you know, we break up into our missions group. Does everybody know where they're going? I'll allow you guys to go. Where, I mean, we got... There's going to be people. You can even walk around and visit all if you want. But uh, if you want to go to the group that prays for Vincent Sejusi of, uh, of Argent... Uh, of Uganda... Then he's down at the down at the bottom of the steps. Go past the bathrooms, first door on the right. That's my group. So come on down. <laughs> but if everybody knows where they're going, let's go ahead and have a word of prayer. If you don't know where you're going, just come see me and I will direct you to a group. Okay, let's pray. Father, thank you again for being our strength. Thank you for being our hope. Thank you for being our everything. For being our God. Lord, I just pray you just... Lord, that we just keep our focus on you and you and you only. And Lord, we just watch you and see what you're doing, not only here in Lee Summit, but all around this world. And Lord, that we always, always be cautious to give you all the glory and honor. And I just pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, youth, you all head back next door. The rest of you, let's go.